Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to load IRs into your Line 6 Pod Go. Now this process should work the same for the Helix and pretty much all the Line 6 products in this genre here, but I'm going to show you step by step on how to do that and some little time saving tricks along the way as well. So let's dive in, let's load some IRs and I'm going to let you of course hear some tones as well. Let's cover some basic setup steps first so that you can use those IRs with your Pod Go or your Helix. I believe the process is the same uh, for all of these types of Line 6 products. So we're going to connect the Podgo first to our computer. Your Line 6 product should come with a USB cable and as you can see here on screen I'm plugging the one end of the USB cable into the back of the Podgo unit here. The other end of that of course is going to go into your computer. Now the next step and I do this maybe a little bit differently uh, you can use your Podgo in or Helix as an audio interface. I actually prefer to just run it through my interface because I've already got that set up and it just keeps things simple for me. So what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to run a cable, a quarter inch cable, from the main out of my Pod Go, and I'm going to run that into the input of my interface here. Next, I'm going to pull up my DAW, which I'm using PreSonus Studio One here. No, I'm not sponsored by them. It's just the DAW that I've been using since 2010. I guess if it ain't broke, you don't fix it, right? Uh, we are going to hear some tones, though. That's why I'm creating this track. We're about to get to that. Uh, but anyway, I create a track here, as you can see on screen. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, add a track. I'm just going to call this the Pod Go. And now we have a track so we can hear these IRs in action. The next step is you'll want to pull up your Podgo edit software. Now if you don't have this, head over to the Line 6 website. Uh, I recommend creating a user ID for that. Go to the menu item that says downloads, click that, and then you'll just go through here and choose your hardware, which we're doing the uh, Podgo here. Almost there, there we go. And then hardware, now software, we want the Podgo Edit. I'm not sure why it doesn't automatically go to that, but hey, <laughs> Podgo Edit. And of course, choose your operating system. We're on a Mac here. And then click Go. And then that will take you to the page where you can download the latest software. Now, if we go back to that download page, instead of going through all those steps, I could have just clicked on where it says Podgo, but you know that's the easy way. And like that Robert Tepper song, there's no easy way out. Well, there really was. I could have taken the easy route here. By the way, that song is from the ultimate movie, Rocky IV. Very cool tune. I actually do an acoustic version of that at my acoustic live shows. Next, you'll want to pull up your Podgo Edit software, and now we're ready to load those IRs into the software. So if you don't have your IRs yet, if you haven't downloaded those, of course, you'll need to do that. Uh, what I did in this case, I went to the York Audio website and I just downloaded their Marshall IRs. And I'm not affiliated with York Audio. I just found out about this from another YouTube channel, uh, this dude here, the Sonic Drive Studio. I was wondering why all of his amplifiers sound really, really awesome on his channel, but they all kind of sound the same. And come to find out on a lot of those videos I was watching, he was using this IR right here from York Audio. Once you do that, that's going to download to wherever you have your downloads set up to download on your computer. Uh, should just go to your downloads folder. What I like to do is I will move this type of stuff over to the appropriate folders. In this case, it's my documents. That's where Studio One is. That's where my positive grid, all my other plugins are. So I just moved everything to that folder. You can see York Audio here. And you can go through here to the folders and see the actual files. Of course, you can't do anything with them yet. We're about to move those into the pod go in a second here. Uh, in this case, and I don't know if other IRs, I'm actually not that familiar with IRs, to be honest with you guys. This is the first time I really uh, dug deeper into these. But in this case, uh, in the case of York Audio, you've got different folders, different versions for like the Kemper, uh, the Mower, the Yamaha. You've got another one for Fractal. Here's line six, neural, and another for Strime and Boss, et cetera. So of course, we're, we're gonna wanna make sure we use the appropriate files here, okay? I'm just gonna go, there's some more versions here. I'm just gonna simplify this and go to the natural phase singles. There's an A and B, I'm, to be honest, I'm not really sure what that is, but once you get in here, you can see all the actual WAV files, in this case, that we're gonna move into the PodGo. So that is our next step. We're gonna go back over to the software in PodGo Edit, okay? 
uh, what you want to do is click on impulses you've got this thing on your left side over here factory user impulses this is where you can load your IRs you can see I've already got a few IRs loaded in here okay how you do this I'm gonna move one over just so you can see how this works I'm gonna go back to my folder here on my computer and I am just going to choose let's see let's choose any one of them here let me make this a little bit smaller so you guys can see it okay there we go so I'm just gonna choose this one down here sorry whenever I click the screen like moves all over the place <laughs> so this uh, this 412 57 whatever I'm just gonna drag it over to the pod just like that and voila there we go it is literally that easy now you can do it an easier way and you can probably just highlight all of these files here and drag them all into your pod go uh, as you can see though and this is just a personal tip and this may or may not apply to you but I like to share this stuff along the way there are so many files uh, you guys know I've said this on other videos I'm kind of like Leonard Skinner I'm a simple man I don't want all these options here I kind of find IRs to be a pain because there's just so many to choose from I'd much rather be able to go into the software and just move the mic around right but all of these files represent uh, different mic placements and different mics and so forth you can see on screen here let me go back to this part this one is the 57 you see that 57 m sorry about that the screen keeps moving over every time i click that 57 m another 57 m you can see all of these all of these mics here um there <laughs> we can go all the way down to here look at how many uh sm57 versions there are so it's not a bad idea to you know to try those out and see how those sound uh, then you scroll down we've got 58 so we've got 121 we've got 160 we've got the 180 so a lot of different mics and a lot of different versions and placements and that sort of thing that you have to work with here uh, again this is york audio i don't know how other irs are they probably give you just as many maybe more maybe a little less i'm not really sure what i do and you can let's go back to the pod go edit what i what i have done is i just chose a few okay and of course the pod go it doesn't show the entire name here but i just chose a few of the mics what i would do here in this case i would take one of these mics like from i know i like the sm57 so i'm pretty sure it's going to sound good on this so i would take three or four of them and move them over into my pod go edit software try those out if i like them i might move some more over and try out more variations uh, then i'd go to another mic and i would just move one or two of those over and i would try it out like the 58 for example or the 184 but if i didn't like any of those sounds from those two or three or four or five files or irs rather that i drug over then i just would get rid of them and i wouldn't i wouldn't move any other of that version over so in this case I moved a few of the SM57 SIMs or IRs and I moved a few of the 121s because those at the end of the day sounded best. And again, I would rather have a few really nice options than just an abundance of options that I have to just, you know, spend countless minutes or hours on trying to find what I like. So next step, we're going to hear some tones, but let's create a patch with a new IR real quick. Now on that note, you can take an existing patch okay let's do that first actually let's go to uh, you've got your factory presets i've never messed with those because those never sound that good i go straight to the user presets you guys can already see i have several uh several user presets i actually use the pod go really solely for my live acoustic solo gigs and i play some electric leads along with a looped rhythm at times that really spices up the gigs so that's primarily what i use my pod go for i rarely ever use it in the studio here but we're using it today because again we're going to hear some tones soon so if i go to let's see this uh this 5150 patch I have. So you'll see that it's paired with one of the line six cabinets here, okay? And, and that's by default. Now I can change those, of course, but we don't wanna use that. I wanna use one of the new IRs here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to click on the impulses over here, okay? And in, in the top, uh, what is that? The top left of the screen. So here are my IRs. Now I can choose any one of these, just double click on that and there we go now i've got the impulse response i can change it to something else 
There's another impulse response, okay? Let's hear some tones. Now, by the way, this is recorded direct, so you're gonna hear the actual direct signal here, which is should sound a little bit better. Uh, but what we're gonna do is, first, I'm gonna let you hear one of the amps with the line six cab and this amp this is the uh this is the brit p75 it's one i use for my leads when i'm playing live here when i'm playing my live solo gigs and it's paired with uh the 412 green back here and the mic i've got a 121 ribbon mic so let's hear how that sounds real quick and again this is the line six cab this is the podgo cab <laughs> Now let's head over to uh, the same patch here because I created a different patch, but this one is using the IRs we just downloaded. And we've got the, as you can see here, you see Impulse Response, uh, York Audio. This is their Marshall cab. It's called the MV30 and it's using the 121 mic. Try to make it as similar as possible, but here's how that one sounds. <laughs> Okay, cool. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to play, I'm just going to toggle back and forth between those two just very quickly here so you can just hear the difference. And I got another tone I want to share with you as well. So hang tight, but let's just kind of toggle back and forth between the two. <laughs> Now, one more tone. Let's go to more of a metal tone. That was more of kind of like a hard rock uh, sound there. Let's go to, I've got one set up uh, using their Ingle version here. I think it's based on the Ingle uh, Fireball. So we're using, and again, normally you'd pair this with an Ingle cab, but I wanted to use a similar cab uh, that I have with the IR. So in this case, we've got the Greenback, same cab that we just used. So let's hear what this sounds like. And again, this is the Ingle amp here. They call it the Ingle Meteor. Okay, cool. I don't know what that's based on. I think it's based on the Fireball. I'm not really sure. Meteor sounds like Fireball, I guess. All right, so again, this is the Line 6, the Pod Go cab with the Ingle amplifier. <laughs> Now let's go to my setting. Again, very same setting here. I just changed the cabinet. 
over to the IR. And again, we're this time we're using, um, I forgot to tell you the last one, we're actually using the green back with the 57, the dynamic 57, that's the line six, okay? So to try to keep things as similar as possible, same amp, okay, same Eagle amplifier here, uh, but we're using the York IR, and this is using the 57 mic as well. <laughs> All right, so let's toggle back and forth between the two here. Let's go back to the line six cab. So there are some pretty clear differences in sound and tone here, but I'd like to know your opinion in the comments. Did you like the IRs better than the Podgo cabs, or do you prefer the Podgo cabs? My honest opinion, guys, I mean, you could give me either one in this case, and I'd be okay with both. Uh, I've been using the Podgo for probably about a year and a half, maybe closer to two years, and I mainly use it. Again, well, mainly, I all the time use it for my live acoustic shows. I've got an acoustic patch. Actually, I downloaded that. I think I downloaded that patch from the Worship Tutorial site or something like that. I saw a video they had because I was looking for an acoustic patch, but I also play some electric from time to time as well. I'll loop a rhythm and I'll play some electric guitar over it, play some solos. That just spices up my live shows. And I've got videos on live shows, playing live solo acoustic gigs. There is a playlist on my channel, so go check that out if you're interested in that. That was my goal of getting the Pod Go. I wanted one unit to handle both acoustic and electric, and it's done quite well up to this point, although I am planning on creating a new pedal board for my live shows. My opinion on IRs is you really tell more of a difference when it comes to the heavier sounds, when you're using high gain amps, because that is where I think a lot of the processors and, and those types of units and even plugins in general, that's kind of where they fall short. It's not so much the amps, it's the cab, the speakers and the mic, it's that part of it. This is where I think the IRs might shine a little brighter, no pun intended, but when we got to the metal tone, we're using the Engel on the Pod Go, I do prefer, uh, I do prefer that IR from York better than the Pod Go cab that I was using. Now for the other tones, I actually, for my more rock tones and those lead tones and even the clean tones, I know we didn't go over those, I actually prefer the Pod Go cabs. By the way guys, if you'd like me to do a, a true comparison full mix between the IRs here and the Pod Go amps and cabs, uh, let me know in the comments. In any case, I want to kind of go back to, this is not, a York IR review or anything like that. It's just what I chose based on you know seeing seeing that dude on YouTube. Again, I think it's Sonic Drive Studio. Pretty cool channel. I don't know the guy, but I was watching a lot of his videos. And again, I was like, man, all his tones, they sound great, but they all kind of sound the same no matter what amp he's using. And uh, of course, I find out later he's using these York IRs. So, you know, the IRs and or more so the cab the speaker and the mic and the positioning of the mic, all that, you know, that might have the biggest impact on guitar tone really than anything else. Yeah, the amp makes a difference, of course, uh, but I think the, the type of cab and speaker and mic and placement, I think that might make a little bit greater impact on your guitar tone. So I'll leave it in your hands whether you feel like downloading external IRs and using them with things like the Podgo and the Helix, is it worth it? You know, let me know in the comments. Uh, I know the Helix, at the time of this video, I'm filming this in, uh, what are we, November 2022, I know Line 6 just came out with a new firmware update for the Helix, which I don't own a Helix, I've, I've considered getting one, uh, but I don't own one at the time, but they just came out with a new update, and this new update really was an overhaul on all their cabs and speakers and all that good stuff, so I'd be anxious to get my hands on one of those and, and do a video, maybe I can do that soon for you guys. 
Uh, but yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments, guys, if you have the Helix or the Podgo, and if you've used IRs, maybe with some of your favorite IRs. I'd love to know your thoughts. Uh, real quick, guys, before you go, if you have not gotten into my Metal Riffmaster Metal Guitar course, make sure you get into that. That's helped a lot of you guitar players. Uh, and thank you to the folks, all of you who have supported me in my courses and my music. Links to all that good stuff, guys, that's in the description of this video. Thanks so much for watching. Please give this a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to my channel. I'll see you on the next video. Until then, as always, keep it metal.